I want to thank you all for attending today's FM Mobile webinar. Uh, during the webinar, the lines will be muted, but if you should have any questions, please enter them in the panel on the right-hand side of your screen, and we will answer them at the end. Now I will turn it over to Brian Haynes, our Director of Marketing. Thanks, Alicia, and thanks everyone for attending today. I'm going to be running through a presentation on asset management with FM Mobile. I think what I'm going to do is mute my speakers here because I was getting some feedback. Go back in here. Alicia, you see my PowerPoint okay now? I can, yes. Okay, great. So uh, I'm going to start by introducing FM Systems. Many of you on this call may or may not know who we are, so I'll run through that very, very quickly. I'll then introduce uh, some interesting things that are occurring in the marketplace right now, uh, primarily centered around the adoption of mobile technologies uh, across the enterprise. Then we'll talk a little bit about our asset management capabilities. Uh, we'll go specifically into mobile asset management, and then I'll finish with a couple of uh, brief demonstrations. At the very end of the presentation today, I'm going to put a hyperlink up to a survey on uh, facilities, uh, the attribution or the data collection uh, for assets. It would be really fantastic if uh, those of you who are attending who could, could click on that link, take that uh, anonymous survey for us. It would be really valuable. It provides a lot of really great feedback for us. So we would really appreciate that. So without further ado, let me just go ahead and get started. So who we are, uh, so FM Systems has been around over actually 30 years now, 31 years, established in 1984. Uh, we're really proud of the fact that we can provide uh, fixed prices, in other words, uh, really predictable costs around implementing our software for our customers, uh, which leads to a lot of them being very, very happy with us. We continue over the years to have exceptional uh, approval ratings from our customers in terms of customer satisfaction. Because they're so happy, they also stay with us for a very long time. Uh, we've got customers for 15, uh, 15 uh, and plus years, 20 years uh, and more, as a matter of fact, who've been using our products. Uh, for the last few decades. Um, as you can see, we've got a, a lot of customers. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but across uh, multiple industries, financial services, technology, defense, manufacturing, energy, oil, and gas, pharmaceutical, healthcare, retail services and entertainment, government, and higher education, and more. We've got hundreds of customers managing literally billions of square feet. I believe our largest customers are several of them managing over 100 million square feet in their portfolio, but we have many, many, many that are uh, managing as, as little as uh, a quarter million square feet and up. So everything in between our software is incredibly flexible for managing portfolios. So one of the things I like to talk about, something I get kind of excited about, are trends and benefits of going mobile. Uh, and I'll tell a few stories as I go through this section, as well as introduce a few facts and figures from uh, industry researchers like Gartner and Aberdeen uh, that that back up um, what we're seeing in the industry. So one of the slides I like to start with is sort of go through the last three or four years as uh, companies like Aberdeen and Gartner were really predicting uh, a massive change in terms of the adoption of mobile technologies, not only from the consumer side, but also um, commercially through organizations, companies, uh, institutions, et cetera. So in 2012, they were really starting to say, it looks like the reign of the traditional cell phone and laptop are going to be challenged by smartphones and tablets. For the most part, we all have them now. Um, as you can see in 2013, tablet computers actually did start outselling PCs for the first time, and almost everyone now has a smartphone. As a matter of fact, we do a lot of analysis around whether or not people are using tablets or uh, smartphones uh, to access our software, access our website, et cetera, uh, so that we can provide the best solution that fits those form factors. And what we're now seeing is the, the advent of something that's referred to as the phablet. Uh, computer or uh, phones are getting so large the, and the uh, displays are getting so crystal clear that it's getting really difficult to distinguish the difference between a smartphone and a tablet. They're really becoming one in a lot of ways. So another trend that we like to talk about is the adoption uh, of phones worldwide. We're really hitting the saturation point in most major markets when you get about 70% adopted, which is where uh, we're going to be in 2017. You're going to start seeing a slowing and change uh, in terms of the adoption rate. And the reason that that happens, of course, is the closer you get one to 100%, you've got less room to improve. But really, once you hit 70 75%, that's really full market adoption. The last 20, 25% of people are going to come kicking and screaming across the finish line before they adopt these technologies, or they never will. Some people just never will. What we're looking at right now is pretty much worldwide adoption 
of using these kinds of technician te uh, technologies. And moving a little bit further with that, that really is also moving from the traditional cell phone that we've all used over the years to really starting in about 2007 with uh, the introduction of the iPhone, a massive shift towards smartphone technology, which has given us brighter, clearer displays, faster connectivity, the ability to actually do computing on a, on a smart device like a tablet or a phone in ways, in many ways, that rival uh, what you could do on, let's say, a laptop or a computer, which has enabled us all to actually get a lot of work done in the field. And that's really what we're talking about, the value of that today. So I'd love to show this slide because this is sort of my own, uh, a little bit of my own journey through adopting technology. Now, I'm a technology guy. I've been at this for a long time. Uh, but I, I'm not the guy who goes out and buys the iPhone 6 Plus as soon as it comes out. I'm usually a year or two behind. But some of these technologies are technologies that I've actually touched or, or uh, I've used in the past. That, that item all the way over here on the left-hand side, most people don't even know what that is. That's actually, that's actually a barcode scanner. Uh, from uh, the early 1990s. Uh, and I was uh, working at the University of Arizona at that time, and we actually used barcode scanning tools such as this to scan our um, asset tags. Uh, this little device right here, the iPhone was not Apple's first, uh, or the uh, even the, um, the, the iPod was not Apple's first mobile device. They tried something in the early 1990s called the Newton. Huge failure. It looked cool, but was pretty much just a digital contact manager, very similar to the Palm Pilot that you're seeing there. When these products came out, wireless was, was, was a pipe, pipe dream. Nobody really had anything like that. Then we started moving into mobile phones. About 1997, I got my uh, first uh, cell phone. Uh, then we came out with the Motorola flip, uh, flip phone, and things started to get interesting at that point because we started to introduce displays into our phone. Go ahead and erase this and go to the next. And as we move across the page down here, There we go. Now we've got the ability to be able to use uh, really, really powerful devices out there in the field. These are recent uh, photos that we've taken showing a technician using a mobile device to perform preventive maintenance, space planning, the ability to be able to take really high quality photos and videos uh, of our facility conditions, uh, barcode scanning, QR code scanning, et cetera. All of that has occurred in a very short period of time. We're talking. Uh, 20 years, or less than 20 years from the bottom to the top, uh, the ability to be able to, to move very, very quickly in our, our marketplace is moving that quickly. So why use mobile solutions for FM? Uh, Aberdeen just produced a, re a report. It's free. It's uh, Aberdeen 2015. It's called The Mobile Technician, The Evolution of the Connection 2015. I really love this report because what they have did is surveyed uh, several hundred companies and came back with the reasons why companies are really beginning to uh, adopt these solutions for facilities management. So uh, starting with uh, reason number four, and I'm going to build up to reason number one, build slowly, get the excitement going, 29% was really an increasing volume of service requests. So uh, that can be due to a lot of things, the high pace of, uh, of the organizations that we work with today, but also due to the fact that most of your employees now are incredibly highly mobile and able to um, enter a service request from just about anywhere uh, for just about anything, even for uh, the devices that they're using or any of the facility conditions that they're running into. Second is uh, faster response to unexpected events. Uh, this is another uh, solution for adopting mobile. What if you've got some kind of an emergency, or uh, it could be a dire emergency, or it could be something like you're walking through the hallway and your manager walks by you and says, hey, uh, where's that facility condition assessment, or where's that list of assets that we wanted to, that I asked about last week? You can actually, if you've got a mobile device with access to that, you can respond instantly, pull those reports up, and have them available to you, and really kind of save the day in that way. The other one is increased competition. I was on a call this morning, a really interesting call with Gartner, talking about the digital workplace. Uh, and there's really uh, this new emerging uh, area called uh, employee engagement, using mobile technologies to in increase em uh, employee engagement. That satisfaction, having employees be more active within the organization, taking a greater role, um, and uh, even doing things such as increasing the value of the brand. We see a lot of companies like Google, a lot of high-tech companies, really providing unprecedented uh, access uh, to their employees to actually be more engaged within the organization. And they, uh, Gartner has made a direct correlation between employee engagement and 
uh, the success of companies. So being uh, a better company, uh, being more highly competitive, uh, both internally and externally, and it's uh, good for most organizations. And the last, 65% uh, customer demand for improved services. All of us have really gotten a short, really a really short attention span or short tolerance for things to work or things to be fixed, and that's really being reflected now as customers who want superior service, those customers that you serve are really looking for uh, improved services throughout the enterprise, and that's really one of the number one reasons for adopting mobile solutions for facilities. So some of the top strategies for best-in-class organizations, uh, Aberdeen uh, considered in their surveys uh, the top 20% of companies that fit into a number of key performance indicators. Some examples of, of those key performance indicators for service organizations were organizations that were able to um, have a very high rate of first-time uh, resolution fix. In other words, uh, a problem was logged, someone responded and was able to fix that problem uh, the first time and not have to come back multiple times to correct it. Uh, the, one of the other KPIs was worker utilization, so being able to uh, make sure that our workers are actually engaged with, engaged with doing their day-to-day -day business and not spending a lot of cycle time walking back and forth to the office um, to uh, get things because they don't have it at their fingertips. And another uh, KPI was uh, improvement in the time to just simply get things done or get repairs corrected. So uh, in terms of why these organizations have adopted technology, 41% of them said the primary, primary reason was to establish a system to track metrics and performance in real time. In other words, as things are being completed, uh, reports are getting run, work is getting completed out there in the field, uh, the ability to be able to measure that performance in real time was really valuable, and mobile technologies are enabling that. Second one was the and, uh, real time, and, and real time is the key here. If you've got it mobile and you're connected to the internet, that ability to be able to have real time connectivity to your facility data, especially your asset data, being able to track technicians, parts, vehicles, and equipment were, was the second uh, driver for those best in class organizations. Uh, third, improved data integration between field and back office systems. There's no longer the need to have uh, a mobile device out there in the field be a, uh, an island on its own. By having that back office integration, the ability to have all of your facility asset data, your space information, your move information, your human resources data, accounting data, all of that potentially available through a highly secure mobile device is a really strong motivator for best-in-class organizations. And the uh, number one reason, provide field staff with work-related information in real time. The ability to be able to get your work done on site, out there in the field when you're standing right in front of the problem, being able to pull up a a manual, being able to pull up a facility asset inventory, barcode scan something and pull up all of the data and maintenance history on that piece of equipment uh, is truly, truly valuable for those uh, best-in-class organizations and something that they're looking at. So 66% um, of the best-in-class organizations were surveyed by Aberdeen, provided that field teams with work-related information in real time via mobile tools. So that's what they're doing. The best organizations who are providing the most service, two-thirds of them right now, have adopted uh, mobile technologies that enable them to be able to achieve that best-in-class status. So let's go into FM Mobile itself. FM Mobile is our solution uh, that's part of the FM Interact Integrated Workplace Management Suite. FM Mobile enables facility team members to access, update, and report on your facility's data in the field from your mobile device. It is a part of our IWMS product suite. It is a separate module and integrates fully uh, with our core module, space and asset management. So if you're maintaining uh, all of our FM Interact customers right now have space and asset management. Their core modules, everyone's got them. If you've got your assets in there, you can add on our FM mobile module and uh, serve up those facility asset data, all of those drawings, everything in the field. It does not require duplicate data entry. It's there. It's, uh, your um, mobile device, allowing you to enable, uh, enabling you to access all of your asset data right there in the field. So in terms of uh, FM Mobile itself, it's not just about mobile asset management, but it's really all of your FM Interact data. It could be move data, it could be space reservation information, maintenance data, sustainability, project management, lease information, all of it. Uh, and what that 
does is enables you to access FM Interact in a purpose-built environment that was purpose-built for mobile workers, uh, which allows you to take advantage of things such as built-in hardware, uh, such as cameras. So if you're out there and you're pulling up information on your building assets, maybe furniture, fixture, and equipment, and you want to take a photo and attach that uh, as a permanent record, no problem. Take it with your mobile device and attach it. Increase productivity by being able to access data drawings and reports at the point of the problem. Uh, essentially leads to reduced cycle time, and cycle time is the reduced number of trips that you have to take back to your office, really making everyone much more productive and providing a higher level of service. And then being able to enter, um, access those drawings and data anytime, anywhere in the field, and increasing the accuracy of data entry because you're standing right in front of the piece of information that you're surveying. Some of the advanced features that come as part of our mobile technology Interactive floor plan, so it's not just about the data, but it's your AutoCAD and Revit drawings being accessible out there in real time. Uh, the ability to be able to perform things such as mobile maintenance and move management, et cetera, taking those workflow processes and uh, extending them to the field. Field verification of assets, so being able to access, update, and validate information in the field about your space and assets in real time. And then run those reports, and I'm going to do a couple of videos of these uh, in about 10 minutes. All right, so uh, FM Mobile, in terms of its asset management capabilities, really takes our asset management module in FM Interact and extends it to the field. So what I wanted to do was just share a little bit about that module so you understand the power of it. If currently, if you're only tracking your space with FM Interact, I highly recommend that you begin to add your furniture, fixtures, and equipment uh, and really extend your capabilities for accessing that data out into the field. This leads to improved accountability being able to accurately uh, track your asset counts and details and track things such as departmental and asset assignments so you know who's responsible for uh, both your fixed and movable assets. Understanding the financial impact, so how much uh, were those things when you purchased them? When were they installed? What's their warranty date? Are they still under warranty? Are they out of warranty? What are their projected maintenance costs for forecasting purposes? All of this is enabled, which allows you to do better life cycle planning, so managing those warranties, uh, making sure that you're tracking the condition of those assets as they degrade over time due to use, and then expect a service end date so you can start plan for replacing them in a responsible way. Also, as I was saying earlier, this provides AutoCAD and Revit integration fully bidirectional. We're not talking about just uploading a drawing into the system uh, and then having to go add all of that data back in. This is true. Bi-directional integration is something that FM Systems does best. We're very proud of this, using a plug-in into AutoCAD and Revit that allow you to be able to maintain that uh, over the life cycle of the building. Uh, being able to perform, perform uh, full asset inventory management, and then obviously the real-time reporting that we talked about earlier. So with FM Mobile, what if you could review furniture and equipment plans in the field with stakeholders during fit-out? Literally taking let's say an iPad or an Android tablet device going out there and sitting down directly with them, pulling up that information, including the plans, and reviewing it right there with the stakeholders, uh, not just printing out a bunch of stuff and dragging it around your offices, uh, but really having that digital information and reports right at your fingertips. Having data reports and drawings, as I was saying, at your fingertips, so if somebody's got a question about asset inventory assignment or condition, Walk up to a room, scan a bar or QR code. I do this all the time myself. I've got a little um, Bluetooth barcode scanner sitting here right at my desk, but you can also do this with your phone if you've got a little app. Uh, type Or type in its room number and see who is assigned to the space, uh, what assets are assigned in the space. Fully integrate those AutoCAD and Revit drawings, and then audit and update asset information in the field from your smartphone. I'll show a little video of doing that. Also, being able to provide appropriate views based upon uh, appropriate secure views based upon your role within the organization. So on the left there, we've got a picture of uh, FM Interact. I'm logged in as a facility manager. Maybe I need a facility manager who needs access to information about my assets in the field. There's a, a view of FM Mobile uh, showing the exact same report that I've created inside of FM Interact uh, through a you know, single click, making that report mobile. Uh, you can have that available to your teams in the field if they've got appropriate level of access to that report. Second example, exact same product, but a very different view. I'm a maintenance technician now. I'm standing in front of a fire extinguisher. Perhaps I want to bring up details on this asset. I want to see its preventive maintenance history. I want to see the last time that the safety seals were checked. I want to see what the serial number is and make sure that it's appropriate. I want to see when this fire extinguisher is set to expire. I can do all of that through a mobile device by pulling that up 
really easily in this example uh, on an iPhone. I've got an Android now. I went from iPhone to Android, and uh, it does the exact same thing in the exact same way. Here's an example of a workflow. I could be out there in the field. I can walk up to a room. In this example, I put a little barcode on the inside of a door jam. We've seen some customers do this. It's kind of a nifty way to be able to access facility data really quickly. You could do this with a QR code as well. Scan it, boom, it automatically brings up uh, everything that's in the space. It could be artwork. It could tell you information about the room, the space type, uh, the furniture, any equipment that's in that space. And I can also bring up that information from a, a data standpoint and update it right there in the field. I can see who's occupying that space. I can see the equipment that's installed. And if I've got permission to change the data, I can do that right away. I can also supplement that data. In this example, I'm standing right in that conference room that I just scanned. And I, you know, I want a, a picture uh, so that people who are looking at that record, or for instance, maybe they want to reserve this space, they want to see what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and attach that photograph to this uh, asset record or this room record as a permanent part of its uh, physical space inventory. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and run through a couple of uh, little videos here that I shot yesterday using my own iPad and my phone. The first one is uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go in here. And uh, right now I'm looking at my asset inventory. I was hoping I could blow this up a little bit. What I'll do is spotlight this. Right now what I'm showing is that there are 1,439 uh, pieces of equipment in my equipment inventory. That could be really hard to find the right one. So we provide uh, provided tools that make it really easy. Type ahead capability. I'm just going to go ahead and start typing the uh, this asset ID in. I could have scanned it at the same uh, point, but I'm typing it in manually with the virtual pop-up keyboard. And what that's done is it's brought that record, uh, those 1,200 records down to two that match my description. We're going to go ahead and on one of those uh, with my finger using all of my finger gestures, pan, zoom, all of that, the regular iPad stuff or Android stuff that you can do. And I'm bringing up information on that asset. And I've noticed perhaps I'm standing in front of it. I'm inventorying the asset or checking out some data. And in this example, I realized that the serial number was entered uh, improperly. Something was wrong with that. I just go ahead and change that data. And I hit submit. And that record's been updated. Not only is it updated here. Uh, in the field, but it's updated in FM Interact, it's updated in my CAD drawings, it's updated in my Revit drawings if they're connected, all of that bi-directional seamless integration in the field, being able to take that data and uh, update it. So there that record's been updated. In the next example, I'm going to go right back to that asset list again using my type ahead. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to do the same thing, same iPad, uh, same user, showing the secure login. I'm just going to go ahead and log in as John Bryant bring up a list of all of my assets, show you some additional things that you can do here. Uh, the ability to be able to not only access the asset details, but what if you want to do things such as uh, look up the preventive maintenance procedures for this asset. I want to look up its maintenance history. Perhaps it's been failing a lot more often than other assets uh, that match its characteristics in my portfolio. I want to be able to see where that asset is physically located by bringing up a dynamic floor plan. All of that is available um, through here as well. So in this example, I'm going to go ahead. These are all the open work orders against that uh, asset. I can look at archived work orders, PM schedules. And last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and take a quick look at the, uh, the floor plan. Shoot ahead here. Make sure I'm on target. Right here, I'm going to go ahead and click View Room. There could be hundreds of buildings in my facilities uh, portfolio, and I want to locate that one specific room. Bam, right there it is. Uh, click view. It's going to automatically bring up that plan, zoom to the room. And this, this example, because I'm looking at a mechanical asset, I also want to look at the mechanical plan. So I'm going to turn on my mechanical plan background, uh, and it's going to bring that up and offer that to me as additional information. I'm going to pick on that space now. It's going to bring up everything in there. Really quick, really quite easy, being able to bring up that asset information on your iPad. The second example I wanted to show was doing a quick uh, uh, condition assessment on a piece of equipment. Maybe I just want to uh, look up information. I'm logging in as a different user. This is Robert Talley. He's going to go ahead and log in. Robert's got a very different level of access than my previous user, John Bryant. This guy is a maybe a maintenance technician. He's going to bring up the building equipment uh, list. He's going to edit that information. And he's going to go down. He's standing in front of that piece of equipment. He's going to scroll down. 
uh, is going to add some additional information that may be missing, uh, such as the manufacturer or the model number. He's standing right there in front of the piece of equipment. Why not just capture that in the field? Accuracy increases when you do this. And last but not least, I believe what he's going to do is he's going to downgrade the condition of this asset um, so that we can track it. Uh, he's going to downgrade it, I think, from uh, good to fair, uh, simply because uh, he's standing right there and uh, he feels like it's got enough wear and tear on it that he's going to downgrade that. All right, so that's it for that one. The last uh, demo I wanted to show, because you could potentially have thousands, hundreds of thousands of assets, being able to report across all of those facilities is absolutely paramount. And we provide that access out there in the field. So in this example, I'm going to bring up uh, one of our reports, uh, show you how quickly they load. These are the exact same reports. This is the building equipment inventory showing me where this equipment is located. There's that uh, analog series fan power terminal that I was looking at earlier. It's right there at the top of my list. A couple of other examples of different kinds of reports that I can run. Uh, here's a facility condition assessment report. This is showing one that I showed you earlier in a screenshot. Love this report because it really, uh, in a quick screenshot, allows me to be able to see what the conditions of my assets are uh, based upon their asset type across my portfolio. Another one I'm going to show here uh, is my furniture by room. Notice how quickly these reports are running out there in the field. We're accessing potentially thousands and thousands of records. And by providing these exact same reports that you're able to access in FM Interact on the desktop really is powerful. Not only are they reports, but they're interactive. Uh, you can scroll through the reports. You can page through them. You can search for specific records in the reports, and we'll automatically pull those records up. Really, really nice capability. The last report I run here is Asset Depreciation Report, uh, which shows me the ability to be able to look at my asset depreciation over time, uh, starting with the original book value and then depreciating them. All right, so in summary, uh, we're almost at my 30 minutes here. I want to make sure I respect everyone's time. FM Mobile is uh, purpose-built for mobile workers. It leads to increased productivity, being able to access that information real-time out there in the field. Greater speed and accuracy of entering information. Accuracy increases if you're standing right in front of the source of the data. And then being able to access that information anytime and anywhere is one of the major values of being able to use FM Mobile for asset management. Uh, this is the asset management data survey. We would love it if you guys could uh, either copy down this URL. Uh, go ahead and I think you can click on here. But if not, please just do a screenshot or something. Grab that. Uh, we will be sending out this uh, survey uh, afterwards to all of our attendees as well as uh, some additional people. We're really looking at solidifying our understanding of the amount of information that our customers and our prospects in the market is really looking at in terms of the amount of information they want to track on those uh, assets that they've got in their facility. So uh, without further ado, Leisha, I believe I have come to the end of my presentation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and spend just a couple of minutes uh, looking at questions we may have. And it looks like uh, the questions have already been answered that were in the queue. Leisha, do you have any additional questions that have been asked? I don't know. And again, if you have any questions, please enter them in the pane on the right-hand side of your screen. I wanted to thank all of you for attending today. We're coming right up on our 30-minute uh, uh, stop point. I want to respect everyone's day, everyone's time. I want to thank you all for attending. Uh, we're really excited about the capability of being able to access uh, all of the information on the uh, facility's assets, furniture, fixture, and equipment that you've got installed across your portfolio. Without further ado, uh, I think we'll end, and thank you all very much. Okay.